Hey guys, what's going on? Def Camp TV here. Hope you're having a good day. If you're not, it's about to get a lot better. We are going to do a priest guide with Def Camp. Alright. Okay. So what I want to go over with you guys in this video is just a little bit about how I heal um, and what I think is some of the important uh, things we should talk about like um, spirit and bonus healing and my talents and gearing stuff like that so let's just go ahead and dive right into it okay when you hit level 70 you are going to want to gear yourself up with healing gear uh, as we can see here I'm a priest so that means I wear cloth and what I've tried to do here is get all the gear I can that has a bonus healing on it. So as you can see, uh, like this headpiece, which is a, a great headpiece, part of a uh, set, increases the healing done by up to 57 and damage done by 19. So that's how you can tell healing gear, guys. Um, let's just look at a piece of DPS gear for, for the difference here. So um, here it just says increases damage and healing done by 28. So you can tell the difference here, the healing is a lot higher than the damage. That's healing here. That's how you can tell that it's something that is um, for healers exclusively. So most of your gear, if not all of it, like me, I just you know hit 70 not too long ago, uh, you want to make sure has that bonus healing greater than the damage. So that is how you can tell healing gear over DPS gear. So let's just go through my gear here. Okay, now... As far as stats, okay, so intellect, as most of you guys know, is our mana, and how much intellect we have increases how much mana we have, but it also increases our critical strike. So the more intellect you have, the more crit you have. Now, the more mana you have, the stronger spirit it becomes, which is our next uh, thing we're going to talk about here. So spirit for priests is amazing. And it's actually better than the other thing, which is MP5. Uh, as a priest, as you can look and see in our talents here, we get Spiritual Guidance, which increases spell damage and healing by up to 25% of your, your total spirit. So that means uh, Spirit, which, let's just read here, increases health regeneration by 25 per second while not in combat, and increases mana regeneration by 417 per 5 second per five seconds while not casting so that 432 spirit we have here has uh, turned into 417 per five seconds while not casting so that's important to note so um spirit regeneration occurs while not casting i think it, it takes five seconds for that to kick in after casting but um if you go into the disc tree and you get meditation it allows 30 percent of that mana regeneration to continue while casting so something important to note, that's definitely something you're going to want to pick up uh, as a Holy Priest. Um, we'll go over accounts in just a second here. So spirit, guys, is huge for us. Um, the more spirit you have, the more you'll be able to heal. Um, if some of you guys don't know, in the Burning Crusade and also in Vanilla, being mana efficient was everything. So um, as we can all see, you know, heals like we're going to use right here, our greater heal rank 7 uses a lot of mana we just went from 91 percent to 86 um we're also not in combat right now so we're it's a little bit different our mana regen but it uses a lot of mana guys uh, rank 7 greater heal uses 701 mana um so the more spirit you have the more your mana regeneration will occur and if, essentially the more heals you'll be able to pull out uh push out sorry <laughs> so spirit very important guys um so you want to make sure pretty much all your gear uh, as a healer usually does have spirit on it sometimes there are trinkets uh don't have spirit things like that nice rings or whatever but for the most part you want to make sure that um you know most of your gear has spirit uh sometimes like something here as you can see this cloak i have doesn't have any spirit but it does give me uh mana per second so it restores mana five mana per second but since it's a pretty nice cloak you have 64 Plus healing, we picked it up anyway. Um, here you can see this ring gives 18 spirit, but it also gives me 7 mana per second. So if you can find something like that, that's even better. Um, but 
you're going to want spirit guys over mp5 if there's a choice um spirit for us is better and that also goes as far as as um like sockets here as you can see here i have one that i think i had to get just for my um meta bonus but for the most part you're going to be wanting something like, like this this uh in this gem here that's in this headpiece the nine plus healing three plus spell damage and four plus spirit that's a very good gem probably the best gems uh for holy priests and then the meta gem that i use plus 12 intellect and a chance for sword mana on spell cast so um those things are very important guys plus healing and spirit you know our main focus is that you're going to want to worry a lot about um how much intellect you have of course intellect is very important also uh probably the most important you know if you look at the aspect of the more intellect you have the more mana you have and also the more spirit you're going to have um stam as we all know gives health um stamina is a little less important for us guys i mean it's okay to have a couple pieces of gear like right here that doesn't have stamina on i know it's green it's ugly yeah i know <laughs> but it's okay you know if you have a couple pieces that don't have stam whatever big deal not a big deal um so next let's just go over um like crit rating and haste uh intellect all, of course also gives crit so the more intellect you have the more spell crit you have so increases mana by 6170 and then it also increases spell critical hit by six thousand six point sorry six point one six point six one percent thank you okay so as you see here guys um our crit chance for holy is 12.79 percent so that's pretty good i mean you want to try to get to around 14 percent as a holy priest uh, that's that's you know average i would say i'm not quite there yet because of my gear um but crit is pretty important for us because of this talent right here inspiration increases your target's armor by 25 percent for 15 seconds after getting a critical effect from your flash heal heal greater heal binding heal praying heal prayer of healing or circle of healing so pretty much all of our heals well a lot of them and uh whenever they crit let's see if we can get a crit here oh there we go look at that inspiration increases armor by 25 percent. so imagine you know you're healing the tank healing the tank you're critting him critting him critting him he's got constant 25 percent increased armor that's huge for a tank that's awesome so crit is pretty important for us um a lot of people say around 14 percent, 14 15 you know you'll mostly see that you'll have inspiration on your target uh for the most part so that's very good to have haste um the stat makes you cast spells faster so faster cast means you can save people more quickly and you can put more heals on a target over time but it also means you burn mana faster so it's kind of a double-edged sword guys um so haste is kind of like you know it's nice but eh, you don't want to get too much of it um if i need to heal somebody quick you know you're going to want to use your flash shield so there's the inspiration again and flash shield is a great um oh crap kind of heal oh shit kind of heal so you know say the tank's taking damage you're healing him up oh you know i just took a hit let me uh bubble myself and flash myself up real quick or you know renew depending on how much you just got hit for so um real quick i just want to go over the different kinds of heals that we use uh renew is a heal over time heals 222 over three uh, every three seconds for 15 seconds i believe right 15 and with your bonus healing it heals for a little bit more so 578 a tick we got there it doesn't crit so meh you know it's still a great heal though um you're gonna want to keep it up in your tank pretty much all the time renew it's it's a great heal over time uh you can put it on dps if they're getting hit you know uh if they have you know say 75 percent health you want to just full heal them up to max put a renew on them you know it's the amount of mana it uses is 414 at max rank which isn't that bad so it's a lot better than using say a max rank flash shield and getting them up which uses 470 because that fl that renew is also going to heal for um you know continue healing them if they get hit again it'll heal for the rest of that so 
It's also an instant cast, which is better. Uh, we all know that, right? Instant cast is awesome. So, renews a great heal. Okay, next we're going to go over greater heal, which, uh, for the most part, is a very, very mana uh, consuming heal. 701 mana, but it heals for a shit ton. So, let's just show here. One greater heal cast. That just crit for 6,304. So, let's see what a non crit heals for. Let's see what a non-crit heals for. All right, 4,125. 4, so, um, very, very strong heal, um, but it's a 2.5 second cast. So, um, you know, it's you get a lot of healing over, you know, pretty 2.5 isn't that long, you know. But there's a way to kind of say, okay, so that's a really powerful heal. But what if I want to heal somebody for less than that and use less mana? So that's where we down rank, guys. So as you can see right next to my rank 7 here, I have Greater Heal rank 1. Let's cast that. So that just healed me for 1,997, which is about the same as a max rank flash heal. But as you can see here, a max rank flash heal is 470 mana, when a Greater Heal rank 1 is only 314. So it's more mana efficient to use a rank one greater heal than it is to use a flash heal. So that means less mana used, that means more mana to save if sh if shit goes, you know, and hits the fan, you can uh, have some mana to use in that case. So very efficient heal, rank one greater heal. Um, also, so is, you know, your, your max rank heal, rank four, I think it is, which doesn't heal for much, 1,237. Um, but it only uses 259 mana. So you're going to get more out of the greater heal, and it uses a little bit more mana than the heal does, but um, if you get that crit, you know, and that's healing for like 3,000-ish, it's, you know, it's a great heal. I use it a lot. My rank 1, I probably use it more than anything, my rank 1 greater heal that I'm thinking now. Um, maybe not than anything, but I do use it a lot. Um... Real quick, we're going to go over Prayer of Mending. So, before a fight starts, um, you're going to want to put Prayer of Mending on your tank. Because what it does is, so it is, you know, you're healing the target when it hits them. has five uh, charges, right? So, if I were to get hit right now, it would heal me for 800 plus our bonus healing. And then it jumps to another target. So, it has five stacks. So it will jump to four targets after me. So it's great because you put it on your tank, your tank gets hit, and that healing that just happened to the tank actually counts as, say, like the tank was healing himself. So that initial threat from that heal goes to the tank. So it's great for using right before a pull. I'll show you guys after this on a video how that's implemented. Boom, you use a uh, used prayer of mending, tank gets aggro, and you're good to go. You can start using your renew or whatever. Um, if you do pull aggro, or if you're, you know, you say you had renew, taking on a warlock who is mana um who is drain uh, what is that called drain mana drain health you know how they turn their mouth and uh, health into mana you know something happens to me all the time i had renew taking on a, a warlock who is it was uh mana tapping and the tank pulled well i've got aggro because my renew was taken and and so you fade real quick and hopefully the uh aggro goes off of you and goes to the tank especially with that prayer of mending will help him pick up uh, aggro even quicker. So, um, after that, we're just going to talk about our two AoE heals, or um, you can count three if you count Prayer of Mending. Um, also, if you take Holy Nova, you can count and there's another one, which I don't use. I don't think it's very mana efficient. But Prayer of Healing. So, Prayer of Healing is our most mana cons cons consumption uh, spell. It uses a lot of mana. 1,004 mana for the, our max rank prayer of healing, but it heals everyone in our party for that much. 1,966 about uh, will heal everyone in your party for that much. Now, it is a great heal, especially when massive AoE damage is going out and you can't heal everyone up at once. You can't do anything else. Um, 
it's kind of like one of those things that you really want to use when you absolutely need it. But another way around that is by taking this talent right here, Inner Focus. When activated, it reduces the mana cost of your next spell by 100% and increases this critical effect chance by 25%. So if we have 12.79 here, we use this and it will give us an extra 25% on top of that, which didn't show up in there. But it's now our next heal will have 100% um, reduced mana cost and 25% increased chance to crit. So it's great to use with Prayer of Healing. You can also use it with uh, a greater heal if you want to use it on just the tank. Most of the time I usually save it for Prayer of Healing. If I don't need to use Prayer of Healing, I'll definitely use it on a greater heal. Even a Flash Heal sometimes when you want to just get uh, that Flash Heal out real quick and you don't have the mana to use it. Boom. Free heal. It's great to use. So here we go. Prayer of Healing. Ooh, and an even crit. So that 25% de definitely helped. So there you go. We got our inspiration too. Awesome, right? Okay, so our other AoE heal, Circle of Healing. Great, great, great spell. Circle of Healing is an instant cast heal, guys, which means you can move around like this and just keep healing people around you. Now it heals, let's read it here, a friendly target and the target's party, and that target's party member within 16 yards of the target for 246 to 270 out of bonus healing we get oh that was a crit 766 about so very good when you're on the move can't cast maybe you want to pop a couple renews on people you know but you need to get some more people up quickly you want to pop some circle of healings while you're on the move even just a quick little heal to get people up it's great for that um that you can even use that with prayer of healing get a prayer of healing and then right after use a circle of healing so you get that extra bonus from that too. Um, very, very, very great heal. It is kind of mana, it's not too um, bad on mana. Let's see, it uses at max rank 414 mana. So, not too bad. A little bit more than a flash, a little bit less than a flash heal. But awesome because it's an instant cast. So, we all need, as we all know, instant cast heals rock, guys. Um, some fights, you know, you're moving, constantly moving, constantly moving, and it has no cooldown either, which is awesome. Which, I mean, they put a cooldown later, which kind of ruined the whole thing of it, but this is before the cooldown, which was awesome, you know. Might have happened next expansion. But BC, guys, was great for Holy Priest. So, that's our Circle of Healing. Uh, real quick, Flash Heal is just a, a quick heal, which heals for about the same as a rank one greater heal but it's quicker so say you're healing the tank up healing the tank up healing the tank up oh i just took some damage let me get me up real quick use a quick flash heal get this person up oh the tank just took some more damage let me heal him back up with a quick flash heal it's a good way to get back on track but the next thing like you just saw there it uses a lot of mana especially when you're pumping them out so quick like that that's 470 mana 470 mana 470 mana coming out really quick it's not very mana efficient, so you want to kind of shy away from that unless it's absolutely necessary to use. Um, and then, of course, we have Power Word Shield. So, Power Word Shield, guys, it is great for negating damage. So, oh man, I just pulled aggro. Let me just fade, put a bubble on me, put a quick shield on me, and now if that guy hits me, hopefully he only hits me once or twice, I'm not even going to take damage because I have a Power Word Shield on me. Great if someone pulls aggro, you got this warlock, he pulls aggro, put it on him. Great to use for that. But guys, you really don't want to use this on your tank. A lot of tanks, um, they work in a way that they take damage and they get threat. Like a holy paladin, I'm sorry, prop paladin, holy shield, that kind of thing. Or they get rage from it. So it's very important to only use your power word shield if it's absolutely necessary. I mean, I think I've only done it maybe one or twice where, the, where I was running around and his threat was already established he had a very good threat he has a, enough rage he's good okay i'm running around i'm running away from murmur you know i'm trying to get away and oh there's the tank he's taking damage i need to go and bubble him real quick before he dies and now that gave me a second to cast a couple flash heals or even uh, a couple seconds to get a nice big greater heal up on him so it's very good in that kind of instance guys but you don't want to use it as a go-to heal on a tank because they're going to get pissed off at you they're probably just going to click it off 
and say, oh, I don't want that on me. I need, to, I need to, you know, I need to get hit. I need to get hit for threat or, you know, really, guys, don't use it on your tanks unless it's absolutely necessary. So uh, with that, we're just going to go. You guys saw my gear. Um, showed you my talents. We're going to go over my talents while we're talking uh, in this um, video a little bit, but there are different ways to do the talents, guys. There are some cookie cutter uh, builds that I will uh, post in the description. Um, and I think I'll do another video another time because I want to go over all the talents and I want to go over uh, why this one's good and a talent build and we'll go through that together. Um, but for now, uh, I'll post my talents up in the description. I'll post a couple other ones that, you know, for the most part, what I'm using here is kind of good for dungeons, good for raids. Um, but, you know, a lot of times in dungeons, you know, you're going to want to take uh, Divine Spirit and stuff like that. So I'll post a couple different options in the description. Uh, but for now, we're going to go over to the video where you're going to watch me uh, healing in Shattered Halls. And I'll see you right over there in a second, guys. Okay. All right, guys. So here we are in Shattered Halls uh, with a few of my buddies here. Uh, right for the get-go, I just want to show you guys one thing that I do here that... Um, you probably shouldn't do so um, our warlock there Kigo was mana tapping or life tapping I forget what it's called whatever the he uses his health to give himself mana so uh, what I did is I put a renew on him right before the tank pulled and that initial threat as soon as the tank pulled actually went right to me so that's something you don't want to do as a healer um, you don't want to put a hot on a DPS or anyone before the tank pulls because that threat will go to you but I was able to actually uh, get a fade off and put prayer mending on the tank, so it gave him some threat and took some threat off me. Um, it's just uh, some. It's kind of like a rule of thumb, guys. Just don't put any hots out right before the tank uh, pulls. So this dungeon, for the most part, you'll see there, there's a lot of fears that go out, things like that. So you'll be you'll be dispelling a lot of fears. Uh, just put feel, fear ward in the tank. Um, this warlock, as you can see, he does pull pretty often he, he does uh, so a lot of DPS on some pulls so um, a good way to save them when they pull aggro is just to put a, a shield on them and that way any uh, damage that would have gone out to him is you know absorbed through the shield and hopefully the tank can pick him up uh, pretty quick so right there um, as you see those fears are pretty nasty uh, so the hunter's pet got feared out and pulled the tank was taking a lot of damage there, so we used um, a couple max rank greater heals to get him up. Or I think one from 50% took him right back up to 100%, but there's still a lot of healing going out. Um, bubble and DPS, shielding them, things like that. Um, we actually get another ad pulled here. So this, you can see here I'm actually going uh, oom pretty quick. Uh, pulled aggro there. Tank was able to pick him up, but... Um, good way to negate, you know, going low on mana is using your inner focus, which I do here. Um, really isn't necessary to use it here. I just use it to cap everybody up. That inner focus and a prayer healing will get everyone up to max health, except for the warlock because he's going to drain health. So, <laughs> but um, it's a great way to fight, uh, you know, losing your mana. And another great way is to get innervate like the druid just gave me, but. You know that's that doesn't happen very often. So, um, but it's nice having, you know, certain uh, different classes in your in your group, like druids who can innervate you, uh, like shadow priests who have uh, vampiric touch, gives you that mana back, or um, you know, even a shaman with mana spring totem, that kind of stuff. It really helps a lot with mana consumption, even buffs, um, such as uh, blessing of wisdom. Divine Spirit, if you're specced into that, uh, anything really helps. Um, for the most part, you want to, you know, have a good amount of Spirit if you're a priest and MP5 for other specs, uh, other classes, excuse me. But um, it's very important to make sure before every pool, you have at least, you know, depending on the pool, like this pool here, you know, you want to have a good amount of mana for, because you don't know what could go wrong here. Um, a DPS could pull, um, you know, something could happen, the tank can get hit really hard, and you're putting a lot of healing out. You just want to make sure that you have a decent amount of mana before the pull. So this pull here, 
Um, the druid was actually, uh, as you can see here, he's got aggro pretty much on all the mobs here. They're hitting him from from back there as well. Um, but everyone's taking a lot of damage here. These um, these these guys with the guns out there, you see, they're hitting me and the caster, and uh, they don't do like crazy damage, but it's enough to uh, to kind of tickle and you know you got you have to heal it up and constantly dispelling and putting fear water on the tank too so it you know it's, it's this is a good place to use things like circle of healing prayer mending it's a uh, great prayer mending is great for this especially when people are getting hit constantly it's just jumping from target to target so you want to keep your prayer mending out um and also if you if you're nice like me sometimes uh, heal, heal the pet up once in a while but uh it Definitely doesn't take precedence over any of the DPS or even or the, or the tank or anyone. So these guys also do a little bit of a nasty uh, shot. It's it's called Wyvern Sting, and it actually drains your mana. So um, again, you just want to make sure you have a decent amount a decent amount of mana before the pool, or you're gonna go in because I think you, you see here it's on me and it's taken like 10% uh, of my mana almost to tick or around that 8%, and I'm probably going to go oom um here yeah so i'm at zero percent mana right there um, but luckily i have a inner focus coming up in two seconds so i'll use that with a prayer mending uh to get everyone mostly up except for the the warlocks is 68 percent, but he's okay he's draining life so yeah it's it's huge guys that inner focus especially when you match it with a big heal like that uh or even like a greater heal for the tank it's and that extra of 25% crit is very nice. Um, so here we're just getting everybody up. Make sure you keep that prayer mending. See, um, I usually keep prayer mending out here, and then I just put it on them uh, at the end of the fight, just to be ready for the next uh, mob, as long as he pulls within 15 seconds, which I don't think he does. But and if you have a nice, nice tank like that, you'll see he'll uh, he'll help heal. While you're drinking, it's a druid. And also, you know, there are some fights where um, that I've been in where a lot of times you're either CC'd or um, you know certain certain fights where you're mind controlled or feared. And it's very nice when uh, you know shaman or a druid or anyone who can off heal can off heal every once in a while and. You know, it happens sometimes. Don't feel don't feel like you're not doing enough healing that, you know, oh, he needs to heal because I'm not doing my job. Well, you know, sometimes there are certain things that you just can't avoid. Now that, as you can see, the tank's getting hit really hard there. I just got him with a nice uh, greater heal crit, it looked like. Um, that put him all the way back up to 100% health, and boom. We just lost the DPS because he pulled aggro. Now, as you can see, he did a lot of damage there. He did... Uh, over 2,300 damage there um, for just that pull. So he was doing some some massive AoE damage, and he pulled aggro. And unfortunately, he didn't have enough time to get away, and I think he knew he was going to die there. So there really is nothing much we could have done there for him. Um, I was about to give him a greater heal, looked like, and then uh, I was I ducked back as I figured, oh, let me try to bubble him, and right in that second, he died. So... Um, in that kind of instance, guys, don't feel bad if a DPS dies. If they're getting hit by two or three mobs like that, um, right to the face, I mean, there's nothing much you can do. Uh, like I said, it, it is, you know, you could fear if you wanted to, but then, you know, there's it, being so close to other mobs there, you don't want to do that because there's a chance you're going to pull. Um, and also, you know, if a DPS dies, it's not the end of the world. You can just res them. They might yell at you, who cares? As long as it wasn't the tank, well, whatever. So this guy was still pulled somehow, and we were uh, we had to battle res, but we were able to recuperate and go back around. Another good thing is um, when you get feared, is to have some <laughs> undead players. They they'll use their will of forsaken, but for the most part, you're gonna have to uh, dispel those fears, and. Um, also, guys, uh, just a quick side note, there are a lot of bosses or um, other dungeons that I, I do want to make some other guides on too, but uh, so many targets have um, magic on them, and you want to dispel that. Like, I can just think, 
uh, I think it's the second boss in Black Morass. There's a um, a buff that the buff ha that the boss has that gives like I think it's like 200% haste or something like that, and that needs to be dispelled um, ASAP. And if you don't have like a hunter in your group who can arcane shot him, which removes the buff, or um, you know a mage, I think can spell steal that, or I don't know if they can spell steal that. I think they can. Um, but you, you basically, if it's just you there, I mean, you have to dispel that or it will kill the tank. And, uh, for the most part, um, usually the group will let you know, uh, sometimes they won't. Um, I've, I've even had some instances on this server where, um, there were some magical buffs that I couldn't dispel that I knew I could, I don't know if that was, a if that was a bug or what, but, um, either way you want to just every once in a while, if you, uh, see something a lot of times it's uh i think in mechanar um one of those tempest keep dungeons there's like an image that goes with the spell so you can kind of see okay is that something that i need to spell and um if you can you know give it a try if you can't oh well but uh sometimes you'll uh you'll like i did on this uh fight uh in another dungeon you know, you'll see it for yourself, and you'll see, okay, I need to dispel that. That right there, this boss, he does, um, puts these pools down right there that you just saw. You just want to step out of them. They do a lot of damage if you stand in them. I think, uh, I was in a, it was in a run the other day, and a DPS stood in it for, I think, three, two or three seconds, and there was no way you could, uh, heal him. He was just dead, so, um. I see that I was in there for like a second and it brought me down to 65% health. So it does some serious damage. So just make sure uh, you don't step in that. And um, it's pretty much an easy fight after that. Rogue cloaked there. Was able to get him up. Tank is taking a lot of damage there. He's doing this whirlwind effect. And uh, just kept him up with a flash heal. And then... Uh, couple of greater heals and he was fine so um a lot of the times you know you see a lot of bosses do whirlwinds and sometimes the tanks stay in them them sometimes they move out um you know it's it's not like moving out is going to do is they're not doing much dps so it's not going to do much harm but the dps should always move out um and if they don't as you saw that rogue almost died there um but yeah, if they, you know, if a DPS were to die there, I wouldn't think much about it, you know. So these next rooms, um, this part here, it's kind of like a gauntlet. Um, these guys come down, just basically, uh, there's like archers in the back, and they shoot these uh, fiery uh, arrows, which kind of light the ground with fire. But for the most part, uh, you don't really have to rush through it. You can take your time, pull these groups one at a time and just melt them down um, real quick I just wanted to go over with you guys um, a couple things that I had noticed um, that I myself personally you know thought was kinda interesting um, so as a holy priest there are um, a couple things you want to look at as far as gearing um, there is um, the hollowed cloth set that uh, I believe in this dungeon here the hands drop off of in Shadow Labs. There's like a shoulder and a, um, I think the chest piece drops there in Shadow Labs too. That's a great set uh, as far as regular dungeons. I mean, you're probably gonna not going to find anything else better than that set until you can make something like your, if, unless you can make your Primal Moon, moon Cloth set. Um, but it's great BIS uh, for like pre-raid gear, that hollowed set. So um, we were running this dungeon, I think, so I could try to get my hands. But I've done it several times and still haven't gotten lucky to get them. Um, so spirit, as you guys know, for priests is very important. And uh, you want to always try to tend to find gear that has spirit over um, MP5 gear. Because we get that bonus um, healing for every uh, for the amount of spirit we have. I believe uh, the talent is real one quick, uh, one second. So uh, it's called spiritual guidance and it increases spell damage and healing by up to 25% of our total spirit. So that just makes spirit all the more better for us. Um, 
especially with mana regen and you know there are some items that give both spirit and mana regen i think i have like a a ring or so so if you can find something like that that's great but um for the most part uh guys you know I, there are some pieces that don't give spirit and that do give mp5 and are still great but you want to try to get most of your gear um to have spirit on it so these rooms up here um i think we decided to just pull everything for a rep so um yeah for the most part as you see guys i'm just putting that prayer of mending on the tank letting him get that uh initial threat and just keeping him up from there uh usually a renew and a couple greater heals can do the trick um there's really not much else um as far as tank healing goes uh so in a lot of instances as, as you can see uh, there are some guys in this dungeon that um put mortal strike on the, the tank which is a real pain in the ass for us because um so basically mortal strike if you don't know it negates 50 percent of the healing that the target takes so if the tank were to get mortal strike basically if we hit him for a 4,000 heal he's only gonna get only gonna get 2,000 of that so whenever the tank has mortal strike like i'm not sure if he does here. I think he may. I can't see his debuffs for some reason. Um, there are mobs in here that do give it, and you want to be pretty much spamming um, your rank, uh, max rank greater heal, because anything else just won't be strong enough to keep the tank up. Uh, like here, you can see I'm using it, and it's still only he it looked like it only healed him for, oh, there it healed him for two thousand or so. I would have healed him for more if it didn't if he didn't have the debuff on him. So, um, definitely something you want to notice. For some reason, my bar, my uh, add-ons weren't showing when he had it on there, um, but I'm pretty sure he did have it there. Uh, it may have been somewhere else in this video, but <laughs> just in case, guys, if you do notice, uh, and you can see here, this uh, hunter's pet pulled another mob. So these guys, I think, might have been the ones who did the mortal strike. So as you see, I'm kind of having trouble getting him up, using some flash heals. That's not even enough, really, to get him up. So I go to a max rank greater heal. That really didn't even do anything. Um, just trying to do everything I can with some flash heals. So right there, I noticed he was getting hit really hard, and uh, there was almost nothing I can do. So I actually feared um, the mobs there. And was able to get him a second or two where he wasn't getting hit too hard. So I was able to get him up. The Warlock pulled aggro. He died pretty much immediately. There was nothing you can do, guys. If you see a DPS pull aggro and the tank is taking damage like that, do not worry about the DPS. Just keep healing the tank. So he's getting hit hard. He's got Mortal Strike on him there. There you can see the debuff. It was just on him. That's 50% of the healing that he's getting is being negated. So um, you can see I just used my Shadow Fiend here because... I was just using so much mana, and I had to uh, just put the Shadow Fiend out, and uh, you get mana back for every time the Shadow Fiend hits. So we were able to, um, <laughs> you can see, <laughs> I was going to say something to the Hunter because of the pet, yeah. But um, for the most part, guys, that was, I got kind of lucky there um, because the tank was near me, and I was casting. I wouldn't have been able to move to the tank there unless I had a second where I could have bubbled him. But um, I got pretty lucky because the tank came right to me, and I was able to fear those mobs. And uh, in that couple seconds where those mobs were feared, were feared, I was able to uh, get the tank back up. So right there, that's something, you know, very situational that only a priest could do. Um, you know, because if a paladin were to bop or something like that, you know, he would have just lost aggro and everyone would have died so yeah i mean that that just shows like the uh you know the cool stuff that you can do as a as a, as a holy priest you know um also i think i forgot to keep my inner focus up you want to keep your inner inner focus up at all times guys uh if you get hit and you have your inner inner focus on it definitely helps with that extra armor um so here that tank just pulled by doing a hurricane and um actually did pretty good i guess a couple of people pulled aggro off him but um for the most part again guys if you're a dps and you're watching this give your tank a few seconds before you start dps and because as you can see here the warlock is pulled um 
everyone's kind of pulling off the tank here. I think the Warlock might. Ooh, that was it. Nope, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of times, uh, like you see again, his damage again is high, but um, you do more damage if you're alive. That's the way I see it. So it would probably would have been better if he would have just stopped DPSing. But again, it was towards the end of the fight. Nothing really big going on. So he died doing as much damage as he could. And then uh, we're able to res him up right after that. But it's really important to just give your tank a little bit of time before you before you start doing damage. So, yeah, and as you can see, um, Renew, guys, is a great, great heal. Um, it doesn't use way too much mana, and it heals for a lot, especially if you keep it up, um, you know, say on the tank, and he's constantly going between, you know, 80 health, 80% 80 health, and 90%. That Renew just keeps ticking him up and up and up and up. So um, a lot of times you'll see, um, and I'll have my healing up here, but Renew is sometimes um, my top heal because of, you know, if it's going on multiple targets, it's going on the tank, and it's going on uh, all these, you know, different people and constantly healing them while they're taking damage. That's a lot of uh, healing there. So right there I pulled aggro. Looks like that group was coming down, and those I had a lot of heals going out. So as soon as you see that you pulled aggro, guys, you just want to, you want to fade. Fade is a great spell for that. Um, it pretty much just wipes your aggro like right off. I mean, sometimes you know if you have a lot of threat, but uh, I don't have um, threat meters up right now just because um, healing most of the time. I mean, I I usually don't have to worry about it if I pull aggro. I I fade and I kind of know um, you know little things like not putting hots on people before pulls that'll that'll help you with. Uh, not pulling aggro, but for the most part, if you heal correctly, you, you won't pull aggro. But sometimes, um, like here where the tank is, can only hit a certain amount of people, and uh, you have to heal them to keep them up, and there's people coming towards you who haven't been hit by the tank yet, no threat has been established by the tank yet, they're going to run to you because uh, your, your heals are putting threat out there. So as soon as they get within range of the tank, or even before that, you just want to fade as soon as you can, as soon as you see that threat on you, and the tank should be able to pick up aggro uh, right after that, so. Um, yeah, as you can see here, guys, uh, this dungeon, for the most part, these guys, they have uh, not very many mechanics, the, the trash. Now, they had Mortal Strike, they have Fear, uh, Wyvern Sting, um, everything that um, that they do is pretty much, you know, not too bad uh, for the most part. You know, luckily as a priest, we can dispel magic. So fear, as soon as you see targets uh, being feared, you want to dispel them. Rule of thumb, guys, always dispel the tank first. Um, just because if the tank is feared and someone else isn't, they're going to they're gonna die. And uh, you want... <laughs> They're going to get aggro, and you're going to want to dispel the tank before anyone, so the tank can get back to the mob and uh, establish threat. So, um, now there are some instances where if you're quick enough and you see someone being feared into a mob <laughs> and the tank seems to be okay, of course you want to gonna, you're going to want to get that person who's being feared into the mob first. And, uh, you know, another way to... Um, like I said earlier, to try to combat that is to use Fear Ward on cooldown. That way, at least every three minutes, you know the uh, the tank, if he gets feared, it'll uh, use up the Fear Ward and he won't actually get feared. So, it's great for that. And here, use the Inner Focus on a heal on that crit, I think, and that gave him a nice chunk of health. These guys are mortal striking the tank right now, so that's 50% of his health, uh, of my healing, is being negated. So I'm using Flash Heal with uh, my Max Rank Greater Heal combined to try to get him up quickly. Um, and I was actually able to cap him while he was uh, Mortal Striked, which, you know, uses a ton of mana. So, again, it's just uh, one of those things that is kind of a pain in the ass and you just have to heal through, but for the most part, it's, you know, it's not too bad unless 
is being uh, mortal striked and getting hit insanely hard. Um, you could, if you wanted to there in that case. Oh, this rogue just pulled. So yeah, so sometimes guys, uh, oh, we weren't able to keep him up there either. Okay, I don't think I was too ready for that one either. I was still drinking. Um, but for the most part, yeah, you're going to want, okay, so here this tank is getting hit really hard again. Um, pretty much spamming our max greater heal. Now real quick, he has a second where he wasn't. Uh, mortal strike there and we got him up real quick and then again being mortal strike um, what I was about to say before that is sometimes in this case but as you see a threat is still kind of people are still um, getting aggro there so I was about to think uh, thinking about shielding the tank but uh you know as I said earlier in the video guys you really don't want to shield your tank in this case it wouldn't be so bad because um you know he does have like uh, max rage and uh, I don't think the it's a lot worse if you you know say uh, shield a prot paladin uh, who they, whoever gets um, threat through being hit but as far as a bear tank um, you know you could uh, but for the most part it's see on a tank it just kind of seems like a waste and that second you could be um, getting him up to you know with a greater heal or so but um it wouldn't be a bad time right there would, would not have been a bad time to maybe use a uh a power word shield on the tank there um but i wouldn't go and use it as a go-to heal uh for any tank so it's great to use on dps like i said on yourself um but this is the way i was taught when i started healing as a priest back in bc was to pretty much never use my power word shield on the tank. So I kind of am like afraid to do it now. I do it once in a while if I if there's like like there if I could see no other way of keeping the tank up but you know I luckily I wasn't on the move I didn't have to uh so I could just sit there and cast greater heals and I think the benefit from that was was better than probably putting a power word shield out. Um but you know it it does get a little tricky sometimes with a uh with that mortal strike debuff so i think you guys can think for yourself on that one what what you would want to do there uh well that when it comes to a bear tank or now i'm pretty sure uh now i know bear tanks um in order for you know i know they they're pretty good on rage and things like that, I guess it would be okay, but um, for pally tanks or any other tank who does get aggro um, or gets threat from being hit, it's a big no-no. So. so these mobs really aren't that bad um, up to this next boss here. Uh, we could have been pulling faster, I guess, but we we're just taking our time. Um, as you can see, I'm okay with mana here. Um, in between heals, you'll see me just kind of sit there and not do anything. That's because um, it takes about five seconds after casting for your mana regen to start kicking in again. Uh, and once it does, you'll start seeing that your mana will you know, go up a lot quicker and even when you're out of combat too. Um, but don't be afraid to just, you know, it's not like if you guys are, like I came from playing Legion where if I wasn't healing, I, I played a Holy Paladin, I was DPSing. So sometimes I feel a little weird just sitting there not doing anything. But then I think, okay, well, I need to get my mana back because you know, your most important thing is your mana. Uh, without mana, you can't heal. So obviously you want to make sure you're not wasting it. Um, sometimes I'll sit there and wand or something like that. But for the most part, um, I mean, you're just kind of sitting there waiting for someone to take damage. Um, sometimes people will pull aggro and take damage immediately so you want to be ready so this next fight again uh, nothing too crazy uh, or bring your own mark own rock he does a mass fear like that and um, at one point he will go on another uh, target uh, as you can see I'm just keeping people spelled here um, fear ward is an up right now so um, 
But it's a very short fear this guy does. Um, but he will switch to another target. Like here, he switched to the rogue. Luckily, the rogue uh, popped evasion. And now he is going to the warlock. So the warlock basically just has to run away. And I'm just going to try to keep, uh, keep him up as much as I can while we DPS him down. So it's pretty much uh, kite and run kind of fight and uh, just keep them up as much as you can here you see he's using flash shield to keep him up um, and here the hunter now has aggro so he switched and now the tank is back on the tank so this is just a mechanic that this guy does um, nothing really too bad as long as people can run away properly and don't just stand there um, and for the most part some Minor AoE damage going out here, just pretty much easily healed by a couple uh, circle of healings, a couple renews out on some of the DPS, some dispels, and yeah, it's just that's pretty much the whole fight. He's pretty much dead now. So, and congrats to the hunter. Yeah, that fight on heroic. I think I remember being pain, but. As far as normal, it's uh, not too bad. So I've done this dungeon a couple uh, more times since uh, this time. and This is actually the first time I've done this dungeon, I'd say probably since um, I was in the Burning Crusade. So it uh, you know, just took some getting used to again for me. But um, just like anything, guys, you know, practice makes perfect. So uh, I actually spent a couple of days... Um, after making this video and uh, did I think I did this dungeon several times didn't get any uh, the gear that I was trying to get but um as you see there what held hallowed hand wraps and they haven't dropped for me yet unfortunately so but uh, just like anything guys you know you'll get the mechanics you'll start understanding things better once you do them, uh, a couple times and uh, it obviously gets easier from there. And as people get geared, of course, it gets a lot easier. Um, this group we're in right now was, uh, I'd say, decently geared, uh, pre-raid geared, uh, you know, like um, mostly blues, maybe a couple epics, but mostly just dungeon blues, uh, not even heroic geared, really. So pretty much just fresh 70s. Um, you want to keep your party buffed at all times, you know, your fort buff, your... Um, shadow resistance buff, they're huge in dungeons. Um, you know, even if there's not a lot of shadow damage going out, just it's good, just safe to just keep up, uh, unless you know for a fact that there's definitely no shadow damage, then of course there would be no point. But definitely want to keep that stand buff up. Um, so if you notice, I think I showed earlier, my health is pretty low. Um, without my stand buff, I'm sitting at 4,901 health. So um, it's pretty low. So a stand buff helps when you're getting hit uh, to not die instantly. So you want to just make sure that people are buffed and um, at all times. Now this uh, next boss coming up on this server, on the war main server, he is actually uh, bugged. Um, now what we do is, uh, we just, we would run across the platform, take him to the other side, and then he kind of resets, and then the tank just tanks him in the middle there. Um, he does a blade storm, and, uh, again, a lot of blade storms in this, uh, expansion, and, uh, basically, you know, melee just needs to stand out of it, and ads do come also. Um, but this... I, is a pretty, I think, typical dungeon for uh, BC, normal dungeon. There are some harder ones. Uh, I think Shadow Labs is, is a little bit difficult. Um, if if you haven't been in there before, if it's your first time. Um, but for the most part, guys, like uh, just doing normal dungeons is a great way to get geared up uh, at level 70. Um, for us, for Holy Priests, um, this dungeon... Drop some good gear. Uh, I can read a quick little uh, 
note that I have here for some uh, from some gear uh, for some instances that I noted that dropped some good gear that I needed personally. So uh, shattered halls here. Um, uh, some boots drop off of uh, Warbringer Omarg, and then uh, the hollowed hand wraps are what I have been after here, which drop off of this boss, which um, I haven't been lucky enough to get yet. Um, the Black Morass is a uh, dungeon in the Caverns of Time. And uh, there's a really nice uh, trinket that drops there. It's a, a healing trinket off the last boss. And um, if you haven't done the quest line for that yet, there's also a pretty good ring that drops there. Um, Architraz has uh, a lot of good gear there. There's a cloak that drops, an offhand, and also the uh, hallowed crown, um, the headpiece drops off the last boss there. Um, Botanica and Tempest Keep. Um, there's some good gear there uh, off the first boss, I believe, uh, or Warp Splitter, I think. Uh, I'm sorry, the first boss, he drops uh, some gloves that aren't bad, and uh, Warp Splitter drops a trinket. So as you can see, this boss... As soon as we're out here, there's really nothing we have to worry about. Um, he does that right there, which is his little uh, whirlwind ability, I guess you could say. It looks a little bugged, but... Um, yeah, for the most part, it's a very easy fight if uh, everyone knows what they're doing. Melee can get kind of um, destroyed here. Actually, our rogue actually decided to sit on the other side since of, because of the bug I guess and actually just kill the ads as they came so that's an option you guys could do um, there you see the warlock got a little too close and he got hit from the uh, the boss there he does like a um, frontal swing attack or a frontal cone attack or kind of like a um, uh, what's it called warriors have it Basically, a uh, swipe attack that hits multiple targets. So, uh, he, the tank does get hit pretty hard here, so you just want to be ready with some uh, big greater heals to keep him up, uh, keep Renew up on him the whole time. Some flash heals if he drops low pretty quick, like I'm doing here, and then into a greater heal. Um, a lot of times, guys, like I said, you'll see me like stop a cast, go to the next one. I said if his health goes higher, I was probably casting a max rank greater heal and then drop down to a, a lower ranked one. So just a good way to conserve mana. And there he goes. Down he goes. So me looking a little disappointed at the loot there. Um, for the most part, guys, um, you're going to want to run these dungeons uh, as... It, you know, if you need to get geared, um, you're probably going to have to run them a few times. I'll finish off the list I have here. Um, Slave Pens has a good uh, waste off the first boss. That's heroic. Now, that I know, remember, waste being a hard uh, piece for me to get. I actually got lucky and found a uh, BOE uh, crafted epic in the auction house, um, which was cost me a pretty penny. But um, And then also, I mentioned Shadow Labs earlier. I'll, actually, what I'll do is I'll put a uh, link in the description guys which has um, this list that I'm reading from but it's basically a uh, best in slot list at all the different levels that you'll be at like uh, so when you first hit 70 there'll there'll be some good gear then uh, from normal dungeons then from heroics then from the certain then from the tier rates so I'll have a whole list in the description for you guys to check out so you can see all those uh, different gear sets that they can get um, because for the most part guys you know uh, with gear, your heals will get a lot better, and also will your uh, your mana regeneration, your mana consumption, and those are basically the three main things that you have to worry about as a healer. Um, bonus healing is you know huge. So the more bonus healing you have, obviously the less heals you'll have to use because the more each target will get healed for. I hope you guys learned a little something from this guide. I'm actually going to thinking about making another one soon, um, just about talents, if you guys want to see that one. I already have it uh, set up, so if you guys want to see that, you let me know. Um, 
sorry if this was a little boring, guys. I know uh, some people want, you know, need some tutorials and just, um, you know, have some questions with uh, how to heal as a holy priest. So I hope this helps some people, and um, hopefully you learn something. Stay tuned, guys, for some more episodes of Super Plate Brothers on Melderon TV and some more fun videos from me, Def Camp TV. Uh, I hope to see you guys again soon. Uh, stay safe and take care. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.